Vishnu Pad, Paramansa Parabajaka Chariasta, Tata Sadashi Shimad, Shila, Bhakti Sundar, Govinda Dev, Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad, Paramansa Parabajaka Chariasta, Tata Sadashi Shimad, Shila Bhakti Rakakshira Dev, Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Bhagavan Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Srila Gaur Ki Shordas Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Srila Satchidananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Vaishnava Sarvabhoma Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai Namachar Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Shri Rupa Sanatana Bhatta Raghunath Shri Jeeva Gopal Bhatta Dash Raghunath Shad Goswami Prabhu Ki Jai Premzi Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Shri Gaurabhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Vishvavarinya Shri Labhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Nabadeep Dham Ki Jai Shri Dham Mayapur Ki Jai Saparshita Shri Nityananda Prabhu Ki Jai Saparshita Shri Mahaprabhu Ki Jai Shri Kolodvip Ki Jai Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai London Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai Ganga Devi Ki Jai Tulasi Maharani Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Go Go Bhi Govardhan Shyam Kundra Radha Kunda Kalindi Yamunaju Ki Jai Shri Purushottam Adam Ki Jai Baladev Subhadra Jagannath Ji Ki Jai Bhakti Vigna Vinashaya Shri Nishinga Dev Ki Jai Bhakta Prabhara Shri Prahlad Maharaj Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai The House of Gautam Prabhu Ki Jai Shri Shri Pad Bhakti Kamal Chagi Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Devashish Prabhu Ki Jai, Shri Dayanidhi Prabhu Ki Jai, all the assembled devotees Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande Hari Hari. Shri Labhakti Pavan Janadan Maharaj Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande That uh, Shila Bhakti Pav and Janad Maharaj has come here all the way from California to be with us for a few days and uh, to share his uh, Vaishnava uh, Siddhanta with us. He's a very dear disciple of Srila Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Rakha Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj, an uh, intimate friend and associate and follower of Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj. He is Gaudiya Acharya in uh, the United States of America for Sri Chaitanya Sarvad Mat. And we feel very privileged to have him with us here. If you give some attention to his Harikata, you will be very much benefited uh, with this introduction. I'd like to ask Maharaj to speak something for our benefit. Jai. Gurva Bistam Supurakam Gurganara Sisha Sambushitam Chintya Chintya Samasta Veda Nipanam Shri Rupa Patanugam Govinda Abhidam Ujjwalam Varatanum Bhaktyan Vidam Sundaram Bandevishra Gurunsha Divyad Bhagavat Premna Vibhijapuram Devum Divyatanum Suchanda Varanam Balarka Shailanshitam Sandra Nanda Puram Sadeka Varanam Vairagya Vidyamburim Shri Siddhanta Nidim Subhakti Lasitam Saraswatanam Varam Vandetam Shubaram Mareka Sharanam Nyashishvara Sridharam Oma Jnana Timaranda Shakyana Jnana Shlakaya Chakshurun Milidam Yena 
Tas my she good of Ainam Ha. Bunchako Paterub, yes, Chuck, Kripa Sindhu, Bievicha, Patitanam, Paveni Bio, Vaishnabe, Bionamonama, Namo Mahabaranya, Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya, Krishna Chaitanya, Namane Gora Tavishanama. So I'm very, I'm very fortunate to be able to come here tonight. I'm very fortunate to meet with all the devotees here, especially the devotees from Green Street and East London, and the devotees who have come with us from, you know, the West London branch also. So I'm very fortunate. Nice, intimate crowd packed into this small room. So we are all getting to know each other very well. So that, this is Vaishnava Sangha. And that is really what we are all about. Our only hope is through the mercy of the Vaishnavas. And especially, you know, so many years, as I've always said, we had the association and the mercy from Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj. So that was very prominent, very, you know, major thing in our lives to be able to be with Srila Govinda Maharaj. You know, so many, so many years in the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat and in so many other countries when Govinda Maharaj would come here, when he came to, when he came to London and we were all crowded into the, to the Green Street Mat and many of the devotees were going down the street to a gas station, to a petrol station to use the bathroom there. <laughs> and it was very, if we say this is intimate, that there at Green Street it was more intimate because <coughs> if you use the shower or if you use the bathroom, you could always hear many people outside talking while you were in there. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but they were all very, you know, very sweet times, very nice times with Govinda Maharaj. And that is the nice thing with Govinda Maharaj, wherever he's at, it seems like home. And, you know, Srila Guru Maharaj, he, he spoke that book, which was published as Home Comfort. So, that Govinda Maharaj created home wherever he went. Not only, we know our home is in Nabadeep, that was our real home, but also the home comfort was being with Srila Govinda Maharaj. And, you know, when, I remember one time, Bhakti Sudhir Goswami Maharaj, he was, he was leaving Nabadeep and he was going to the west and Srila Govinda Maharaj said, now you are going to some remote corner of the world. So, you know, in our pride, we would think, you know, California, we're in Silicon Valley, you know, this is the, the center of the cyber, you know, technology and everything like that. But the Srila Sridhar Mars, this was a remote corner of the world. Whereas by normal estimation, you would think, Nabadeep Dom, you in, first you go to Kolkata and then you go 120 miles, you know, from Kolkata towards the, somewhat towards the Bangladeshi border, and there is Nabadeep Dam, right? And there we're in, there we're in the, you know, the villages, but going back to the major cities, Srila Sridhar Marsh would say, going to a remote corner of the world. And then he said, don't forget, this is your real home. So this, this, this year, for Gaur Purnima, I was, I, I tried to go, I would try to go every year for Gaur Purnima to the Mott. So this year I was at the Mott, and I was, when we got to, when we did the four days of Parikrama, and we got to Mamgachi, the appearance place of Srila Vrindavan Dasakur, and we all expressed our appreciation to the Bengali pilgrims and the Vaishnav pilgrims that go with us, they're walking. And, you know, you know, I remember the first year I went, you know, 
was maybe in the 1980s and 80, like 87. And, and I tried to do the parikrama, you know, barefoot. So I'm, work, I'm walking, that year is very hot. So when we got on the third day of the, um, going to the uh, temple of Nishringa Dev, Nishringa Pali, we're walking on the road and the road is melted and the melted, melted uh, tar sticks to your feet and then the rocks stick to the tar. <laughs> So by the time I finish the third day, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like blistered and hobbling and the, and the devotees, the Indian devotees are kind of laughing because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like stumbling along. So I finished the parikrama that day, that year barefooted. But I think that was the last year <laughs> I went barefoot. And all the other, this year I'm seeing, someone told me, oh, Acharya Maharaj advertised in the newspaper, so so many, so many people came, but we don't know that all of them were devotees. But for my vision, no, I saw that they, I saw them as all being devotees. They were all walking barefoot. They were so happy. They were on parikrama. They were, you know, and it was so nice to be in the association of the Vaishnavas, going to all the different places of, of pilgrimage, and this year also. So as other years, uh, you know, the the temple of of uh, the uh, Shanga Morari, that temple right before Mamgachi, it's very little, so not all the devotees could go go there. Then I went to that temple and I saw, and then the what Pujari tells me, he said, these are the deities of Vasudeva Ghosh. And these are the deities of Shanga Murari. And these are the deities of, uh, who was it, the third one? I don't know if it was. Uh, also one exalted Vaishnava. And they're like tiers of deities, very beautiful. Uh, and I, when, then when we got to Mamgachi, I was, I was expressing that how happy I was to be in the association of the pilgrims who were all going on those days of parikrama. That was so nice. That was like, you know, I think that like as my day begins, in the morning we're reading Chaitanya Charitamrita. <coughs> that I consider that as a, a sp very sweet, auspicious beginning of my day. So also I feel that the beginning of my year would be to go on on the parikramas at Navadip Dham. I don't know in the future I'll be able to do that because of my health and everything. But at least this year I was able to do it in all the previous years. And I felt like I felt like how nice it is to be there because we're in the West and so many responsibilities and we're working. So for us Sometimes in the West, many of the Western devotees, like, like um, Gaur Purnima is one day. And, and, and then the day, the following day, Jagannath Mishra Mahotsav, that's another day. But, you know, it's, you know, in the West, you don't have the opportunity to really, to observe the festival even all day long sometimes because someone has to go to work, somebody has to take the kids to school, so many so many things have to be done. But there in, when you're in, in the Dom, you know, Gaur Purnima, you could say last more than a month, more than a month, the people get there for Nityananda's appearance day and they go to Eka Chakra. Then they're, then they're there in the Mott and then you know, there's the the Adi boss, and then of the parikramas, and then the parikramas, and then there's there's uh, uh, the Adi Adi boss of um, of you know Gaur Purnima, and then Gaur Purnima, then then the festival of you know Jagannath Mishra, and then then there's Pancham Dole, where we used to go to. Uh, uh, we would always go to Hapania, and then there's Dasham Go, and uh, we would go to Bamanpar, 
So, you know, like so many days, you know, and, and for, and, and that is what I think of like as Gaur Purnima. I don't think of it as a day. I think of it as, as, as like the year is beginning so beautifully and so many nice days of, you know, of, of thinking of Mahaprabhu, thinking of his devotees and, you know, so, but the reason also, we're not sightseeing, we're not doing tourism. We're not tourists. We're not going to Nabadi Dam as tourists. We're going there, you know, as seva. That is a, a seva given to us by Srila Guru Maharaj and Srila, Srila Govinda Maharaj. It is our, it is our seva. Govinda Maharaj told me, he told me, I want all my sannyasis to be here for Gaur Purnima. That was one thing he told me. So for me, I didn't think there's any other thing, just going there for Gaur Purnima. That was the instruction of Govinda Maharaj. And, he's, and he told me, he said, I, he said, if you, if you, he said, if I asked you to jump off the centenary building, you will jump. And I, I know you will jump. And I was thinking, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, but if, and if you, and if you go into Govinda Kun, he said, you may walk upside down, but when you get to the other side, I know you'll be right side up. <laughs> <laughs> That he was, and so you know, I my life has been being with the acharyas. When I when I first went to uh, met was with the devotees in 1970. In 1971, I went to India and I was there with Srila Prabhupada and for about four or five years. In India, I didn't leave because you know. Going to the West, I thought, well, I don't want to go to the West. You know, I maybe see Prabhupada once a year, if that. But if I stay in India, I'll see Prabhupada so many days of the year. So I would see him maybe, you know, very often during, during seven, eight months while he was in India, four months he'd be in the West. And then afterwards, afterwards coming with, you know, Srila Govindamar. So the whole, our whole mood, and you can say in uh, in California was, we were either planning to go to be with Srila Govinda Maharaj or waiting for Govinda Maharaj to come come there, come to be with us, or we were going on his world tour with him of going to different places, which would include, you know, London and Russia and Italy and South America, so many countries, you know, and course in in our own place so no 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 this way. be careful uh, 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 so uh, so i you know that so many always I kind of think about that so many people are always interested that they are in contact with a qualified Vaishnava, which is, which is natural. You know, that, that uh, we're to approach a Vaishnava, we're not to come with any material aspirations. We, you know, we bow down to the spiritual master, bow down in the direction of divinity, not in the direction of some material achievement. And, and we're speaking and asking questions and doing seva. This is, this is natural. So, you know, part of this, uh, you know, tadvidi pranipatina pariprashnena seva. So, so this prashna, the, you know, we're asking you know, we're asking questions, and because we all we want to know that we're in contact with the, with the, the, the you know the real substance. We want to know that what we are receiving is 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 coming from the lips of the acharya, from the real acharya. You know, because like anybody else, before I came to 
before I came to Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj and Govinda Maharaj, before I came to them, I was looking for something and I went to different places, you know, like, like a dog who goes to different doors looking for a meal. And you know, the, sometimes the dog goes there to a door looking for a meal and sometimes he's given something to eat and sometimes he's kicked, you know, and he goes somewhere else and then he goes to another door. You know, but like that, I'm going to different doors and I'm looking for something to eat. But I'm not finding anything to eat in many of the places. You know, they're telling me, well, what are you chanting? I, they're chanting. Some people are chanting. What are you chanting? Oh, we're chanting the Lotus Sutra. Oh, what is that? And then, uh, so, you cannot control him. He's very naughty. <laughs> So, you know, so then I, I said, well, well, what are you chanting for this for? And they said, oh, because we want to get a new house. We want to get a new car. We want to get a new refrigerator, you know, something like that. And I thought, well, I don't want to chant for that. <laughs> I'm not interested in chanting for any of these things. If I want these things, I'll try to earn some money and buy them. But I'm not interested in these things. And I come, then we come to, come to, you know, come to contact with the actual, uh, the sub, real substance. And, you know, Savai pumsam paro dharmo yato bhakti red hoksajaya haitukiya pradyata yayatma suprasidati. This will actually satisfy us, you know, this. Supersedity, you know, that the, the real engagement of, of anyone's dharma, of anyone's pursuit is to establish a loving relationship with the Lord. So that's something we want. And, you know, I, I once heard Acharya Maharaj speaking and he said, when I came to the Mott, Govinda Maharaj asked me, you know, are you a, are you a devotee of Guranga Mahaprabhu, are you a devotee of Radha Krishna? And he said, he said, I answered, Govinda Maharaj said, I don't, I don't know who is Guranga, and I don't know who is Radha Krishna. I only know who you are. So that, you know, we're coming, and that is our expectation. I only know Gurudev. I only know who you are. I don't know what is, I don't know what direction is divinity. It will only, divinity will only, you know, Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, he said, um, just like he gave the example, he said, you know, that you will not know a Vaishnava unless that Vaishnava reveals himself to you. Or he said, in the same way, you're chanting, you're, you know, you're chanting uh, Harinam. But what kind of Harinam we're chanting, we don't always know, you know, whether it's, we don't know whether it is, you know, Nama Parad or, or, or Nama Bash or Shudanam. We, we do. Well, I'm thinking I'm not chanting Shudanam, but, <laughs> but you know, what, what quality I'm, I'm chanting with. And, you know, one time I told the Srila Govinda Maharaj, I said, oh, Srila Govinda Maharaj, you know, in Iskon, they're chanting 16 rounds a day. But here, the devotees are chanting four rounds a day. So you're very merciful because you're, you, because we're chanting less Nam Aparad. To chant more Nam Aparad, that would be worse. But we're only chanting four rounds of non, Nam Aparad. <laughs> when I said that, Govinda Maharaj laughed. I told him, yes, we're very merciful. We chant, you have us chanting less Nam Aparad. But Bhakti Vinod Thakur said that, when that you cannot know a Vaishnava unless that Vaishnava reveals himself to you. And that was the case with Gadadhar Pandit and, and with Pundarik Vidyanidhi, that Gadadhar Pandit saw Pundarik Vidyanidhi and thought, what kind of a Vaishnava is this? Because he's dressed very in silk and very opulent and sitting on a silk bedstead, smoking a hookah and 
like that. He was a zamindar. He would expect some wealth, some exhibition of wealth. He is an incarnation of Rishabhanu Raj, you know, the father of Radharani. Anyway, when, when uh, Mukunda began singing, you know, uh, when the uh, whole Bucky, I, I cannot quote, quote the verse, you know, oh, you can say. Aho Bucky, I'm stunned, Kala Kutum, Jigang, Saya Paya, Yerapi Sadvi, David, the Vim, the Tutti Tong, Tatonium, Kamba, Dialum, Sharanum, Brajima. Yes, this witch, Putina, she came there and she was looking very, very, you know, very beautiful, you know more beautiful than any Bollywood star. You know, she was looking so beautiful. And she came there and she's offering, you know, to feed Krishna with her breast. But Krishna, you know, he's a small baby, you know, smaller than any of the children here, except maybe, what is that, the, that one young girl. Uh, what? Huh? Eight months. Huh? Eight months. What name? Eight months. Eight months. It's the daughter of Gautam Prabhu. Yes. And eight months. Yeah, maybe Krishna's that age, small, or maybe smaller. Anyway, then Putana, you know, has poison smeared on her breast, and she's trying to kill Krishna. But, you know, Krishna sucked and took, sucked out her life's breath and at the same time gave her, you know, gave her moksha or liberation up to the level of the Vatsalya group, of the parenthood group, because he took her, her she's showing some kind of motherly affection and he takes her life but he gives her a place in that divine realm of Vatsalya Ras. And then that's that verse by Mukunda that is from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Mukunda singing. Pundarik Vidyanidhi heard that verse and he began to go into, you know, like ecstasy and convulsions. He just like and he's saying, Who can we who can we take shelter if it is not Krishna? Because that verse is saying that. In whom will I take shelter if it's not Krishna? Because Krishna, Putana came to kill him, and still he gave her a very exalted position. So Makunda singing that verse, and Pundarik Vidyanidhi is, you know, tearing out his hair, tearing his clothes, destroying the whole room, like we were, uh, like we were told how Krishna Sundar destroys any room where he goes. <laughs> so Kundarik Vidyanidhi is kicking apart everything and destroying the whole room. And then, then after that went into trance for seven hours. And, and then Gadadhar Pandit, he was before thinking, what kind of a Vaishnava is this? He doesn't look like a Vaishnava. But when he saw that love that was exhibited by Pundarik Vidyanidhi, he thought, that he should approach Mahaprabhu and, and because he was thinking I should I should accept Pundarik Vidyanidhi as as my guru, you know. And that's natural because Gadadhar Pandit is like the presence incarnation of Radharani without a, without Radharani but without the Bhavakanti of so much of Radharani. Mahaprabhu has stolen that. But Mahaprabhu himself was referring to Pundarik Vidyanidhi calling, calling out Bap Pundarik, Bap Pundarik, calling him his father. Because Mahaprabhu is also expressing the mood of Radharani. Then when Gadadhar Pandit said, I have not taken, I have not taken Diksha and I want to, I'm thinking to take Diksha from Pundarik Vidyanidhi. Pundarik Vidyanidhi Mahaprabhu said, so that is a very good idea. And Mahaprabhu approved of that. So the idea is, how can you know who is a Vaishnav without that Vaishnav revealing himself? That Bhaktivinoda Thakur expressed that, and he said the same way, 
you, 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 will get the, you will get the holy name when the holy name reveals himself to you. When that holy name reveals himself or themselves, Shishi Radha Krishna, when they reveal themselves to you within your heart, then when your heart, when the holy name reveals to you uh, himself, then, then you will know the holy name. So in this way, we get that exercise, we're going along, we're trying to, we're coming in contact with so many Vaishnavas, we're coming in contact with the Acharyas, we're coming in contact with the sincere servitors of the Acharyas, you know, because we say that I'm not, I can't, we say we're not approaching the Lord directly, but we're <coughs> approaching through Das Anu Das, we're trying to approach as a servitor of the devotee. You know, I'm not trying to be, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to be the exclusive servitor of Gurudev. I'm trying to, I'm trying to serve those who are dear to Gurudev. And in the Prapanajiva Amrita, Srila Srinamara says, you can, you can know your relationship with anyone by knowing the relationship of that person with the center and the relationship of the center with that person. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, and I saw that practically. Sometimes there were some persons who were dear to Grove and Marsh, and I didn't particularly like them, some of them, you know. And because Gurudev is very merciful. But then I'm thinking, Gurudev is very very merciful and he likes this person so i must develop some friendship with that person also and that i really thought like that so even even persons who you know normally i wouldn't want to be around so much then i became friends with them and they were saying oh okay you know you're okay but you know, otherwise the relationship would be very strained you know but because gurudev accepted those persons as very close to him, then I'm also developing friendship with those persons and trying to, you know, trying to do something or trying to, you know, you know, engaging. In, and always, always our approach to the higher plane, to Gurudev, is that everything that we offer to Gurudev is on the plane of a of, of bogue. You know, whether it's, you know, whether it's food or whether it's our, uh, the ramblings of our, of our mind, we're asking Gurudev for some advice or, you know, we're offering some dakshin to Gurudev. Like one, one, one devotee gave Srila Sridhar Maharaj a large donation and he said to Guru Maharaj, he said, so what will you do with this money? And Gurudev, Guru Mar said, that is my business. Your business ended when you gave this donation to me. That's when your business ended. What I will do with that donation, that is my business. But your business ended when you gave the donation to me. That is the end of your business. So he indicated not to ask what I will do with this with his dock sheet. That is, that is my affair, not your affair. So th that is always the relationship with the higher plane. We are giving, we are giving to that higher plane. Whatever we give, even you ask Gurudev for some advice, you can consider that the workings of your mind, that is extremely like boga, if it is even digestible. Sometimes, sometimes one time Guru, Go, Govindamara said to us, he said, we are told to take Vaishnav remnants. We are told to take the Vaishnav remnants, but some remnants of the Vaishnavas may be indigestible. <laughs> he said that. Because many pro persons would come to him and some of them were di formerly disciples of somebody else and they become disillusion but at the same time not just dis just disillusion they became cynical and in Vaishnavism actually there is no room for cynicism you know one can be cautious one can even someone may not be a real optimist although we would say usually a Vaishnava is optimistic 
But somebody may not be opt optimist, optimistic. He may say, I'm, you know, uh, I am seeing this event and I do not think the result will come out to be very good. And he may be right. You know, he may have that vision a little bit of the future. But there is no room for cynicism. Vaishnav is not a cynic. He isn't like... You know, you know what is a cynic, right? He, he's like seeing things with a very cynically. Doesn't trust anyone. Govindamar said, "That is my disease. I trust everybody." You know, he would trust everybody. Then you can say, "Well, if you trust everybody, you may be cheated." All right, so I may be cheated. I may be cheated, but what will I be cheated out of? You know, what will they take? You know. I may maybe cheated something, but I'm not cynically involved. That doesn't mean I'm naive. It doesn't mean I'm foolish. That, as Guru Maharaj gave the example, Trinata pi suni chena taroriva sahishnana amanina manadena kirtaniya sadahari. Govindamar said that everywhere, and he practiced that. But, you know, Guru Mahar says, you know, does that mean that because I'm showing humility, tolerance, and offering respect to others, that the dog comes into the temple and I should give the dog a nice seat and, and you know, offer him some puja or something? No. And I'll chase the dog, you know. That's the difference. I cannot effectively ta chase the dogs when... when Sagar Maharaj, he had a very booming voice. Yeah, he was, you know, he was from Maori background. So when he, when, he, when he said hut, then the dogs would move. <coughs> when I said hut loudly, the dogs would not budge. I, I think I didn't pronounce, maybe I didn't pronounce the hut properly. <laughs> But, you know, we're, uh, humility doesn't mean just, you know, you know, out a lot. You, humility doesn't mean, and you know, just offering, you know, someone, in, letting someone into your house that may, may harm your family. You don't want to do that. So you have to have some caution. But we're not, we're not cynical. I don't have a cynical, cynical view of humanity because... We're trying to at least function something on the level of Madhyamadhikaris. And the Madhyamadhikari, one of the qualities is he, you know, he worships the Lord, he makes friends with the devotees, and he preaches to the innocent. So we will consider that most people are innocent, you know. I don't really care what they're eating, you know. They, they may be eating mumsha or whatever, you know. They may be eating, as someone said, duck. You know, somebody's eating duck, somebody's eating goat, somebody's eating fish, somebody's eating snake, you know, lizard, you know, or anything. I, I preach in China. So they, you know, Prabhupada used to see, say what? The Chinese eat everything on the land except the bicycle, everything in the sky except a kite, and everything in the water except a boat, you know, that, that he used to say, say. So when I go there, I see, yes, they are very varied in what, they're eat, in what they eat. Their diet is, is not, not very vegetarian. Tamal Krishna went there and he told them, he was speaking with some Chinese officials and he told them he was vegetarian. So they brought him this pie, like, you know, baked pie, but what was the pie full of? Insects. <laughs> Insects. And he said, I cannot eat this. And they told us, this is not, this is not meat. This is insects. <laughs> you know, so they were thinking that was all right for a vegetarian to eat insects. And, you know, he said they themselves, while he was talking to the officials, they were chewing on they were chewing small birds. <laughs> That's what he was eating. <laughs> you know, of course they were cooked, but they would they were small, so they they would chew the birds and the, you could hear the bones crunching and everything. It was <laughs> so this you know, I don't really care what people you know, I 
like I said, I'm, 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 I'm going to preach in China, so I have to be, I have to be open-minded. <laughs> I was, you know, I was sent there once by Prabhupada in 1974. He, I, I, I went, I was went, I went to China just to renew my visa to go back to India. And when I got to, I got to China. I went to Kowloon. I walked up the stairs, and I'm offering my. Dundavats, and there was Srila Prabhupada sitting there. I didn't even, he'd arrived a few hours before me. I didn't even know he was going to China. I only went there to, re, to, to get my visa renewed so I could go to India. And when I was offering my Dundavats to Srila Prabhupada, before he could get off the floor, he said, oh, you have come, that's very good. You can take charge of Hong Kong. And I, then I said something else, like, oh, I had other plans. And he says, that is not important. You know, you stay here. And when I was staying there, I remember sometimes, sometimes we, you know, were cooking ghee. And people, we would cook ghee or we would light, you know, good quality masala incense from India and people would pound on the door. That smells terrible. You know, they didn't like the smell of ghee. They didn't like sometimes the smell of incense. But what came out of their windows Oh, it's like insufferable smells, but they're compounding on our door. What are you, what smell are you making? You know, it's cooking ghee. It doesn't smell bad. It smells good, you know, but because we used to get cans of ghee that came from Australia and then cooking with that. And, but I don't know. So I don't really care, you know, when I say that make friends with the devotees, worship the Lord. Preach to the innocent. So, like I said, the innocent is a broad category. I'm not, you know, I'm not looking p at people, you know, like trying to see them with some kind of a jaded eye that, <coughs> oh, this person I don't like, or this person. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see them as innocent, and then I will say something. And the other thing is to avoid the association of those who are asuras. You know, so. Uh, you know, namam duskritino mudha prapadyante naradama maya parita jnana suram bhava mashrita. So then, a suram bhava mashrita, I try to avoid them a little bit. You know, someone begins deriding the whole conception of Krishna consciousness and God and, and saying, you know, saying, I don't believe in God. I, okay. You don't believe in God, that's all right. You don't believe in God, but you have to be able to d believe in the spirituality and the divinity of life. You have to see that life is a gift, that life is something special. You're not just a chemical reaction. You may not believe in God. All right, so you're not advanced enough to believe in God. But at least you have to recognize that there is some divinity in life. If you if you can't if you can't even appreciate the quality of life, then what what can I say to you, you know? So anyway, I'm happy to be here. I'm taking some time, but you know, this is I consider the I'm considering everything that's going on in London. I consider to be the mercy of the Acharyas. It's the mercy of Srila Govinda Maharaj. Srila Srila Maharaj, mercy of Srila Acharya Maharaj, you know. We're getting some, through through our faith, we're getting some mercy. Everything, everything's resting on the platform of Shraddha. Everything depends on faith. So that is our greatest wealth, that all of you have, are faithful persons. You have some faith in the, you have some faith in the divine messengers. That's very good. <coughs> Anyway, my good fortune to be here, my dandavats to all the Vaishnavas, Manchakalpatarubhyas cha, Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha, Patita Anam Pavene Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha. Does anyone have any question for Maharaj? Does do it? Is there persons here who, you know, maybe 
Maybe uh, Maharaj here can say something in Bengali too. Didi got a question for you, Maharaj. Yes. 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 Y
And then you said also, very nice, because, you know, you said, I'm, I'm in middle aged and I don't, and it seems like life is very short. And I thought all this is, all this is very positive thinking because, you know, actually that is the truth for everybody. You know, one, we heard of one saint, he was in, in the market and he was buying vegetables and it was late in the day. So the, the person selling the vegetables told him, oh, please hurry up, Bob, it's getting late. And just those words, it is getting late. The man had some spiritual realization and he thought, yes, it is getting very late. My whole life is passing and I am not accomplishing anything. And then he gave up everything and he went to Vrindavan. And of course, that is the life of a saint. He became, you know, he stayed and then he went to, ba to Vrindavan. But it was that realization, just what... An ordinary person in the marketplace told him, hurry up, Bob, it's getting late. Then he's thinking, that is, this is the story of my life. It's getting late, and what will I do? So it is positive to think like that. And, you know, everyone has so many responsibilities because we're living in this world, and we cannot ignore the world. And you have family. So you have to be able to transmit something of your faith to your family, just as you heard something from your mother, and she gave you something and you learned from her. You know, the other day I also had, I was, I was here and I was uh, lying, lying at, awake at night. And I was thinking in that way. I was thinking, you know, you know, so much mercy I got from my mother, and I did not appreciate her. You know, she's gone. But I had appreciation from her, but I didn't appreciate how much she gave me, how much she sacrificed for me. So I think that kind of thought is very positive. You know, we don't have to be complicated. You say you're a simple person. That is a good thing. To be a simple person is a positive thing. We don't want to be complicated persons, you know. You know the, you know, Sharo Vaishnav. Vaishnavas are supposed to be simple, so we want that. As long as I'm thinking that I'm not the doer, that's a good thing. Then more and more, you develop some attitude of serving the Vaishnavas, and everything will come to you. That's my thinking, you know. By serving the Vaishnavas, everything will come to us. You know, and then you'll hear from the Vaishnavas, you'll be around the Vaishnavas. May be, you can't do that 24 hours a day because you have so many responsibilities. But you try to at least do that sometime during the day and think of the Vaishnavas, serve the Vaishnavas, you know. You know, you have a, you live near Green Street. Yeah, well, there's something you can do, you know, for helping the mod, helping the, helping the, with the save of the of the of the temple, and that's very good. But I think your I think your attitude is very nice. I think it's very good. You know, we are not. I I mean, speaking for myself, I don't know about others, but I'm not a very sophisticated, complicated person. My life is very simple, and I, you know, I could not be complicated if I wanted to. So all right. You know, I will try to be with the Vaishnavas, I'll try to serve the Vaishnavas, you know, I'll try to, you know, what Gurudev asked me to do, I'll try to do that. You know, we're always singing, Yasha Prashada, Bhagavat Prashada, Yasha Prashada, Nakatika Topi. You know, if it's pleasing to Gurudev, you know, then, then I will try to do that. If it's not pleasing to him, I will not try to do that. One time I, I bought a stamp, you know, for stamping my arms with, you know, it was a wooden stamp and I thought I'd stamp my arms with Vaishnav Tilak because, you know, I can't get, I can't properly put on the thing. So here's a stamp I'll put on the Tilak, stamp it on. And so one of my god brothers, he said, why are you using that stamp? I said, well, it's very easy. I just stamp it on. And he said, you should not use that stamp. 
I don't know if I should or not, but he said, you should not use that stamp. I said, what do you mean? What's wrong with it? He said, did you ever see Gurudev use that stamp? And I said, no. And he said, I rest my point, my case. You know, <laughs> Gurudev doesn't do that. Why are you doing it? So, you know, I thought like that. Maybe it's all right. Maybe it's not all right. But just those simple words. I said I'm a simple person. Somebody said, did you ever see Gurudev use that stamp? No. Okay. Then I, then that's the end of my argument. <laughs> so I thought, that's true. Gurudev doesn't use that, so I won't use it. I don't know if it's okay. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. But somebody wants to stamp tea lock everywhere. <laughs> but it's, it's, I think it's better to mark the tea lock and then say, you know, the, the names of the Lord while you're marking the tea lock. Uh, what was it happened with Hari Charan? You know, one one small boy. You know. You know. You know he had uh, tea luck on his head, but he didn't have tea luck on any other part of the body. And Hari Charan was just, you know, baby, maybe just showered. And he said to that small boy, "Why you only mark your head? You should mark your whole body with tea luck." And the small small boy said to Harichar, and he says, "At least I have something. You have nothing." <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I don't know how well I'm doing, but at least I'm trying to, you know, I have something. So if I have, you know, if I have, uh, what do they call it? Five pounds. At least I'll try to do some business with five pounds. Someone has great wealth, a million pounds, and they can do business with a million pounds. But I only have five pounds, so I'll try to do business with five pounds. Uh, maybe I have only something. I don't have everything. I have only something. But I will try to do business with whatever something I have, you know? What, what is that business? Uh, what's the ver na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim, kavitam va jagadishaya kamai. Mama Janmani, Janmani Shrari, Bhavatad Bhaktira, Haitukitvai. That Guru Mahar said, then, then we will be like the, what is it, the money lenders. The money lenders. That we don't want anything from the Lord. We don't want wealth and we don't want, you know, uh, we don't want followers and we don't want uh, fame and we don't want enjoyment. We don't want liberation. We don't want anything. Mama Janmani, Janmani Shvare, Mama Tad Bhakti Rahaitu Kitvai. The only thing I want is your service in my life, birth after birth. So maybe I have only a little now, but like the money lender, I don't want anything from the Lord. So the only prayer I have is you increase my devotion. You increase my wealth of, of devotion. And then I'm, I'm like the money lender. He, he loans you. He loans you 500 pounds, but you have to give back the money lender 600 pounds. So from, your, from the loan, you could not get a loan from anyone else, but the money lender gave you 500 pounds. Now you have to pay back the money lender 600 pounds. Then the next time the money lender does business, he's loaning money, he'll loan somebody 600 pounds. Because now he has 600 pounds, and he wants 750 pounds back after the loan. Then he has 750 pounds, and he loans it to someone. Then he wants 1,000 pounds back. Now he started loaning 500 pounds. So we're like that with devotion. I may not have so much wealth of devotion, but I'll do business with whatever I have. Like you say, I don't have very much. But then you, you give to the Lord some service, and you get back from the Lord you're asking, you just give me more devotion. I don't want anything from you. You just give me some more devotion back. So then you're like the money lender. And then next time you could do business with a little more. You have more devotion. Then you're offering that to the Lord. And again, your prayer is, I don't want it wealth or followers or, or fame or, or liberation or anything. I don't want anything material. I only want more devotion from you. So then the Lord pays you back with some interest. You're asking for more devotion. He gives you more devotion. Then each time you're serving, you get some interest back on your investment and your devotion is increasing. Like that. You know, 
We may start out small, but with faith, we'll get back some dividend on our devotion, and then we'll be able to invest that, like the money lender. I have, now I have something more. Before I had just a little, you know. Before I just had a little, I just came in contact with the devotees and I could offer them a flower. Like I see children offer, offering a flower to Gurudev. I could just offer a flower. Now, you know, now uh, I've come, co come in contact with Gurudev and now, now I have something more that I can offer, you know. What is that? Well, eventually you can say, more, what is more? I can offer myself. Before I was offering a flower, maybe now I can offer myself to Gurudev. You know, I can do that. And you can say, oh, I'm a, not a complicated person, I'm a simple person. But even if, you know, you can offer your, still offer yourself as a simple person to Gurudev. Still, that, a good offering, you know. You can pray to have that offering. Pray Gurudev will accept you as, you know, his eternal servitor. A good, good offering like that. No. Anyway, I'll let someone else answer. Right? Not doing good, so good with the answers. Uh, maybe you'll speak some Bengali. If you uh, wish, Maharaj. Yeah. No other questions, right? Mm -hmm. no. Would anyone else like to ask Maharaj a question? Maharaj. Uh. Yeah. What I feel, uh, my aim is whatever I do, my actions should be only with Krishna, with my faith in Krishna and for Him. Say, I want to keep myself healthy for the service of Krishna. Whatever I do, my duty is in the life. Uh, whether it is younger or bigger and then older, whatever I do, I do for Krishna. Yes. So then your question? No question. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to be confirm if I'm right to well, if think. You, uh -huh. If you can keep yourself healthy, you're doing better than I am. <laughs> yes, I am not always able to keep myself so healthy. But it is true, I'm trying to do some service to offer. Whether they're healthy or not healthy. Yeah. Yeah. But you are, all of you are, you're, you've all come here tonight and you're all very, you know, engaged in hearing and, and you know, appreciating the message of the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mad, of Gurudev. And, and Jari Maharaj, you know, this is, this is a good thing, a nice thing. Uh, anyone else? Is that okay? Yeah. So, uh, sometimes I try to preach my work colleagues or my friends, but uh, not knowing anything like being completely ignorant, I know very little, that's the truth, about Krishna consciousness. Sometimes I say, okay, I'm not qualified, but do you have any advice on how to approach when we try to preach Krishna consciousness to someone that maybe doesn't believe in God, maybe has, have a, has had a hard life? So is there any advice you can give me what to say first or what would you do? In that case, <laughs> you have more, much, much more experience. So if I can take a little bit of that. <laughs> I know you can say that, but I, I, at times I couldn't even preach to my own family. My father, my mother, they weren't against, they weren't against Krishna consciousness. They liked, because they liked that I was a devotee, you know, because they thought, oh, my life has become more positive. That I'm a devotee now. I'm, you know, I'm, you know showing some, you know, devotion, I'm clean, like that, so they appreciate that. But, you know, my, my own mother, she, she, she always called, she always talked about the hair Krishnas, 
you know, the Hare Krishnas. So, you know, they came to see me a few times. I'd offer them prasadam, but you know, I, you know, if I, if I gave them something to read, they wouldn't read it. You know, and sometimes, sometimes I visited my mother. You know, and this is a story. She would cook for me. She would only cook nice things, you know, like some corn or something. She would cook nice things, and I would take that. Then, then I told Acharya, I told no, I told the, pardon me, I told the Srila Govinda Marsh that I'm sometimes visiting my mother, you know, not very often, but I'm going to visit my mother once, twice a year, as she lives four hours away, and she would cook something for me. And then Govinda Marsh said, said. You know, you were, you were, you're an acharya. How can how can you do that? So then I was when I would go to see my mother, you know. Then I I brought my own pots and then I would cook, and I didn't take what she cooked for me. And one time I was there, you know, and she put an ear of corn into the microwave, and she said, "Do you want to push the button?" <laughs> <laughs> She, she knew she wasn't. I wasn't. She wasn't supposed to cook for me, so she told me to push the button on the microwave, <laughs> like that. But you know, and uh, I would go there and I would cook something. But I'm not. You know, what I'm cooking is, you know, what I like. But it's not. You know, I don't know how to cook for what they like. You know, like, you know, my mother. She would. I'd see her. She would open a can of peaches and she would eat just some peaches out of the can and I I and when I was there she'd have no there would be no meat in the house or nothing visible you know it would all be somewhere else hidden you know and then and then uh, I asked why I asked mother why are you, why are you just eating you know peaches and she said, so long I cooked for your father, for you, your brother, my sister. She said, so long I cooked for all of you, and now I'm just tired. <laughs> so she doesn't want to cook. She didn't want to cook anymore. She's just eating peaches out of the can with some cottage cheese. And I, then I told, told my brother, I said, oh, she doesn't eat anything except... She just eats peaches and cottage cheese. And he says, yes, when you're around. <laughs> when you're around, that's what she eats. <laughs> but anyway, I, as I'm saying, it's very, not always hard, not always easy to preach to people, but there is ways to do it. There is ways to do it. You know, like, um, like if you, you cannot just, you know, they're not going to just hear philosophy coming, you know, like some philosophy. They, but if you invite them to your house, for instance, and you cook something and you offer that, then they will eat it. And if you can cook something that's palatable, then they'll like it. Or if you can't do that, you know, that they're not going to eat at your house, you can... You can go somewhere with them and engage in something with them and then develop some friendship with them. You know, that happens all the time, you know. You know, I, I'm, of course with me it's a little different. I'm sitting on a plane. I'm sitting on a plane and I, you know, I don't always talk. I don't always talk to the people next to me because sometimes I know... I, I say some friendly things and they say some friendly things to me, but I know they don't want to just be sit there on the plane and be trapped and be preached to the whole time. You know, so that I'm, a, I'm saying a few pleasantries to them and they're saying a few pleasantries to me. But la the last time I was on the plane, then it, then it started with a boy next to me he says, oh, do you mind me asking, but are you a, are you a monk? Are you a Buddhist monk? And then... And then I said no, and I said something, and then he said, "Well, can you come? Can you explain to me something about what you believe in and all that?" So then I had the opportunity, but that doesn't always happen. Doesn't always happen that way. So, 
you know, you can create the opportunity, you know, like engaging in some relationship with people. Maybe you take them somewhere or you take them, you invite them to your house or you, you go somewhere and you do something together and at the same time you have an, if they develop some, you know, more personal friendship with you, then they'll be more interested in your, in your views. Because it's always better to try and make some friendship with people before you start talking to them, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, one, I remember one man, he preached for an hour to somebody and just, he's talking, 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 and he's preaching to the someone. And at the end of an hour, he preaches to the person, and then that person says, well, you know, I think dolphins are more intelligent than humans. You know, so what is, what is the benefit of his preaching, you know? So then I remember that devotee, he was like, you know, very kind of like shocked. He's preaching for an hour and the person says, I think dolphins are more intelligent than humans. So then he, he went to Srila Prabhupada and he said, Srila Prabhupada, some, I, somebody told me, he said, dolphins are more intelligent than humans. And Prabhupada said, dolphins, what have they ever done? <laughs> Well, maybe dolphins are intelligent, no doubt. <laughs> but that was his answer when he said, Prabhupada, someone told me dolphins are more intelligent than you. Prabhupada just said, dolphins, what have they ever done? <laughs> so he dismissed. But if he would have asked the person, the person's views before he started talking for an hour, he might have had understood in what, what avenue he could enter. You know, you're always looking for some some, you know, like one man came to Guadalajara. Everybody in everybody in Mexico almost is a Catholic. So one man came to Guadalajara, and the Pope had just been to Guadalajara, just just been not to Guadalajara to Mexico. The Pope had been there, and I said, I said to that man, I said, Oh, did you know the Pope was just here? Of course, everyone knew that. And then the man said to me, you know what, you know what God calls the Pope? And I said, no. He said, dragon. Then I go, oh, then I know this man is not a Catholic. <laughs> when he says dragon, then I know this man's not a Catholic. So then, then I'm thinking he's not a Catholic, and he, but he's an evangelical. From his tone, I know he's an evangelical. So I know that evangelicals, like some elements we can say, they, they, if, they, if you show them the deity, they won't, they won't be respectful. But, you know, if you start to say to them, we're not worshipers of form, we're not m worshipers of formality, we don't believe in pomp and awe and circumstance, we're not so much, imp you know, that we're not into the Vaikuntha worship of, of Aishvarya Gyan, there's ways of preaching to him. So I was talking to him, you know. Then the man said to me, you know, something I can't understand. The man, oh, I told the man, I said, one thing I can't understand. I said, why are you so negative when there are many people of many different faiths? And I see, if I go by the church, I see many old persons there praying and they're very happy with their faith. So why you should be so negative towards all of them. And then he said, well, if I see a man running towards a, towards a cliff and he's about to fall over, shouldn't I shout some warning to him? I said, all right, if you have that kind of vision, you have that kind of vision, I can accept that answer. But you know, I'm not of that, I'm not of that mood. I am not, I am not a, you know, I'm not a Vishnu witness, <laughs> you know. I'm not slamming, I, I'm not, you know, going onto the corners and, and, and just talking to the air and, and, and speaking against, you know, other people's faith. I don't like to do that, so, you know. But I knew a little bit I could talk to this, to this evang evangelical person, and he became friendly with me, he liked. What I'm, you know, but I'm walking very carefully with tiptoes. At any moment, I know if I don't think this a little bit, I'll say something, and he'll get very 
angry, so I have to be, you know. That, you know, I can't preach actually adequately to them, you know. But what I could, we had some communication, we talked, he was appreciative, you know. So, okay, something is something, you know. What do they say? Kichu, 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 something. You know, something. Uh, but you can do that. You can do that to your workers. Go, go somewhere. Go somewhere with them. Talk with them. You know. Yeah. You'd be surprised. You know, maybe some lady. You go there. You take her a prasadam garland. You give her the garland. You know. Oh, how nice! Beautiful flowers. <laughs> Right? All right? Now Bengali. <laughs> Mar I mean, I think we've had a nice a session nice. here with you, Marish. Okay, so. I didn't give you any time. <laughs> I think everyone's very happy with hearing from you, Marish. Yeah. All your personal experience and <laughs> unique stories. All right. As again, I express it as my fortune to be here. And I'm very thankful. Where's the house of Gautam Prabhu? Yeah. We're in Gautam Prabhu's house. We met we met some of his children, right? We met Krishna. We met Krishna Sundar. We met Krishna Sundar and we met, met uh, Anisha. We met Krishna Sundar and Anisha. You have other children? Krishna, you have Krishna Sundar and Anisha. Huh? Big one is Ananga Manjuri. Okay, that's it. Ananga Manjuri is Anisha. Ananga Manjuri. And then Krishna Sundar. And Ananga Manjuri. The bigger one is Ananga Manjuri. Yeah. And then Krishna Sundar. And then Ananga Manjuri. What's the same name? Angona. Angana. 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 Oh, Angana. 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 Okay, very nice, and we're happy to be in your house. <laughs> Thank you. Small house, but more house, but many people. We all are here. Big house. Yeah. If you had big house, it'd be more people. But you have a small house, and the whole house is full of people. <laughs> They're all the way up the stairs. Uh, okay, so maybe we sing Hari Harai? Yeah. Okay. Jai. Gautam Prabhu Ki Jai. Jai. Hari Harai Nama Krishna Jarabaya Nama